the 27th. Hi guys, welcome to Women Entrepreneurs and Real Estate. Today is June 27th. You know why I know that? Because these are my goals that I wrote this morning on June 27th. I write them every single morning and so should you. Now, I'm here with uh, our co-host today, which is Candice Duran and Michelle Patterson. Now, Candice Duran is the, um, I don't know, CEO, the the all in charge, the the chief everything officer over yeah, like White that. Ridge Construction <laughs> um, and, and, and development, as well as a really big, important piece of Avatar Construction, which does contracting all over the United States, um, which is a really good thing. You know, here's a here's a strong woman in a very very male dominated world, right? Here's a here's a woman that is really moving to the top of the ranks in construction, where all you ever see is 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 dudes with big guts and and beer, right? I mean, that's a come on thing, come on, let's go. Bam, yeah, you're forgetting the tattoos hammers. though, right? Big just, tattoos. <laughs> go, come on now. <laughs> Right. And you're just you're just yeah, it, it down. And so, that you know, here's tattoos. somebody who's gone up and, um, and above and beyond. And then, yeah, I know I've got I've got somebody who's going to want to say hi eventually here. Um, and then the her. other thing is we've got Michelle Patterson, who is the CEO of the women's um, the women's uh, conference, the uh, California Women's Conference, also um, in charge of women global. I right, hold on, man. This this is crazy. I'll, I'll, here. There we go. So Global Women Foundation, the Women Network. Look at her holding her book because she's got women. Women can change the world. What is the book? The title of your book? Women change the world. So you stop it. Was I was great. right on. Oh, nice. Get out. That is awesome. <laughs> OK, so that's who we have today in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, in the right corner, we have Michelle Patterson <laughs> coming in at 120 pounds of raw oh, twisted steel. <laughs> And in the right corner, we have Candace Duran weighing anyway. So the, the thing, I wish I had a, uh, I can't make it go, you know, the ding, 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 ding. So the first thing that I wanted to do tonight um, on women entrepreneurs and Hi, mama. is have, is have Candace, uh, or I'm sorry, is have Michelle. Cause last week we talked a little bit about Candace. So Candace do a real, a real quick background synopsis on you. Um, and if you guys okay. want to know more, you guys can check out last week's uh, episode, and you can you can find out a little bit more. And then we'll we'll turn the mic over to to Michelle and let her give her two cents. And yeah, I, they're going to come in and out and in and out because they knew you guys were on, and they love both of you. So, um, okay. and then and then we'll start getting into some of our cool questions that we're going to have. Cool. Sounds good to me. All right, you guys are up. All right, my name is Candice Duran. I know you all know me from last week, and I've actually been with you all several times on the radio. I'm actually one of the managing partners of Avatar Construction Services. We service major lenders, Fannie Mae, Freddie, all the fun stuff, Wells Fargo. We also deal with investors. And we also have a second company that's an investment company in acquisitions, White Ridge Development. We wholesale, work on residential rehabilitation. Uh, we also do several educational things lately, uh, seminars and whatnot, teaching uh, realtors and agents about 203 programs and several other topics. So. That's pretty much me. Oh, and I have five kids. I don't want to forget that. So. Yeah. Five. They're <laughs> awesome. <laughs> wow. I have yeah, my own I know, baseball right? team. <laughs> she's creeping up on David ready. Lang, but but she's she's still at five right now. And then um and, and then she's got well, really more than that, right? Because Omar. I do. I have a six one with Omar, which right. will be my soon to be daughter for eternity, which I No, no, no. I meant her. Omar. So she's really so seven. Oh my God. Yeah. That's seven then. Yeah. She's you got to count Omar. One of my kids. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I know Shannon counts me. So, I mean, that's, that's the way it's got to go. Yeah. So, we've had that talk. <laughs> that, that is, uh, that is Candace Duran. All right. Wow. Look at that. Everybody's excited about you now. Yeah. Before we introduce the right corner, there's something special that, that everybody needs to understand right now. And I know that you guys might not know a this, couple candles on, but this is this is uh Mr. Rogers. He called in and wanted to have a little. And when it comes time to light the candles, <laughs> if you have candles on the cake, wanted to say something to you. It's important for an adult to do that. See, we in fact we, matches and fire are things that nobody should ever be able oh to play with. I just want you guys to be aware of this. The reason why grown-ups do their best to keep children away from fire is that they love them and they don't want them to get hurt. We love you. We love you're in so much trouble. Blowing out the candles on a cake. 
it's important to keep far enough away from the you burning want, don't candles get burned. so that they won't burn you. Let's pretend that this is a song. Happy birthday, happy birthday, dear friend. We sing to you. Happy birthday, happy oh my birthday, goodness. happy birthday to you. We thought we'd try to tell you how we love you. I'm so embarrassed right now. <laughs> we thought we'd try to sing and dance and play today. Happy we birthday. to surprise you on your oh birthday. Did, are you surprised? I'm surprised I forgot you're my Facebook friend and it's right there and I should have thought about it. We love you every day. Now, that is Candice Duran, everybody. Sing happy Woo! birthday. She is a measly 21 years old. Just hit 21. No. Oh, no, no. I want to be 28. I want to be 28. 28. Have the whole drinking, learning Forever. the hard way. I'm in a good spot. Okay. <laughs> I'm stick with 28 and not say I'm 40 today. That's so that, that is Candace Duran, everybody. Next up is Michelle Patterson. And Michelle, why don't you talk a little bit about who you are and how you came to be here? Now is when you would start well, talking. I, I'm still caught up back to Candace. I'm, I'm still uh, impressed. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes? Yes. Okay, good. So, Candace, I can't believe you have five kids. I do. That's pretty Seven counting Omar and Bella. <laughs> Mr. Rogers just said right, happy so birthday, that's, and that's, that's the part that you're tripping out about is that is that she has five kids. <laughs> well, happy birthday. And uh, we, we celebrate, we share a congratulations. So, Pete, thank you for, for having me part of your show. And... Uh, Well, fun. we're part of the time. You're, you're fun all the time. So my name is Michelle Patterson, and I had the honor of taking on a, now it's in its 30th year, the California Women's Conference. It was started by Governor George Duke Majin, and actually the same year that he started the conference, I interviewed him for the eighth grade school paper. So talk about, wow. you know, Now, were you in eighth grade? Or you just I was in interviewing grade. for the eighth grade paper? I was in the eighth grade. Oh, okay, grade. just making sure. Thanks for clarifying that, Pete. That was good, because I'm sure there was many people that were confused. Totally confused. So I'm yeah. asking, you know, great, really important questions. What's your favorite pastime? Right, right. What's your favorite you color? Have? And What's your favorite color? And he Political had, questions. <laughs> very, very important questions. And he responded with, you know, that was the best interview I've ever heard. And I thought, wow, you know, I, you know, I matter. You know, what I shared, you know, is important. And so I can remember getting into um, student government and doing a whole bunch of different things and then fast forward, ended up getting a phone call and the call was, you know, would you be interested in taking on the California Women's Conference? The state was no longer going to do it. And I thought, how amazing. That's the same conference, you know, where I met that governor now, you know, 30 years prior. So we had... Uh, an opportunity to take it on in 2012. We had 150 speakers. Um, we had about 7,000 in attendance. Um, this past year, we just finished it, May 19th and 20th, and we had um, 9,000 um, in attendance. And it was just an amazing event. We had people from all over the world come in for this event. And what I'm most proud of is what we're doing now is we've been following. Imagine Huffington Post meeting you know, TED Talks. And what's happening is we're taking this conference and putting it all over the world. So in just a couple of weeks, we'll have the Oregon Women's Conference. So it's happening in Portland. It's uh, July 14th and 15th. And we've got Carrie Murphy, who's out there putting that together. And our conference is popping up. We'll be in India doing a conference in January 2015. Uh, January 15th, we've got Louisiana. We've got Florida. So we'll wow. be in all... 50 states um, across the board in the next three years and all major, major countries and cities. So even, even it's Alaska? really exciting. Yeah. But then you can what? see Russia. If you're in what? Alaska, you can see Russia. <laughs> so that'll be cool. Sarah, Sarah Pala, you are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you need help, let me know. I'm here. I do. Okay. I need help. I'm done. <laughs> So, so it's been um, nothing short of, of uh, amazing just to see the different women. So our, our focus and our mission is to put a spotlight on women that are doing just incredible things. And uh, Candace, you would be one of those women. 
So the fact oh, that you're thanks. very male dominated industry, you know, raising a family. Did you say that she's male dominated? <laughs> I did. Hey, that was my <laughs> secret. Because that, that's that's the whole thing. She just she no, she's a whip, man. She won't let that happen. So let's talk about this, um, Candice. How does that? What do you think about what she's doing? And and then also, what I'd like you to talk about um, a little bit, uh, Michelle is. Why did you want to take on the women's conference? Because there were other things that you were doing as well. I mean, you've got Touchpoint, you've got um, all the different charities that you were involved in, right? And you kind of shut down almost everything else and went full speed into this. Why? Why did you do that? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Well, depending on when you ask me, I mean, it's funny because I got into it and I thought, what, what am I doing? I mean, there was definitely a period of time where I call it the monkey chatter, but it was, you know, you're not out of the governor's office, you're not a Kennedy, you're not Maria Shriver, you know, what were you thinking? And we did, we ran into some major challenges, but it really was about um, stepping out of your ego, not letting your ego get the best of you and saying, you know, I can do this. And it's as simple That's as right. ask for the help. I think oftentimes as women, we don't ask. Um, we don't reach out. We 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 think that we have to show that we have it all together. That's and like a sign of weakness, right? Absolutely. Or but we isn't it a sign of weakness for men too? I don't think so. You guys have the boys' club going on. Sometimes I think in a in a oh certain. Oh my god! Industry, she just talked about the boys' club last night. <laughs> it's true but, though. Yeah. No, talk. Well, go think, ahead, Candice. What were you saying? I was just going to say, I think men hold themselves to a different set of standards. I mean, if I walked up and I was a guy, and I have four brothers, mind you, so and I work construction, I see it on a regular basis, where one guy will walk up and say, hey, I have a problem with, you know, Lisa last night, we got into a fight, and, and instead of it being a sign of weakness saying, hey, I don't know how to handle the fight, they turn around and say, oh, you showed her. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole yeah. different set of standards that men have. They don't seem to be as threatened, and women seem to feel instantly like, less adequate, I believe. Is that worded right? Pretty close? Well, I, I think what's happened too is that for so long, women have competed for that one spot. Yep. And so what's what men have done a great job of, and again, I was in recruiting for 17 years, you know, men would have an opportunity to apply for a position and they would have, you know, out of the 10 requirements, they'd have three of the requirements and they'd say, you know, wow, you know, I'm perfect. I've got three of the requirements. Women, on the other hand, you know, they'd they have go, nine. They'd have nine, and <laughs> yeah. because they don't have all ten, they would say, "I'm not even going to apply." I mean, they literally would not put them, you know, in the the process of actually applying for the opportunity. And so, man, that is we're, crazy. We're, yeah, let alone get the job. I mean, there's a lot of women that'll have nine out of the ten, as where she's saying a man will have three, and a man will still get the job because a man will go out and have a drink after hours or or find that that personal male bonding point as to where women's afraid to put herself out there. Well, Michelle, tell that story that you told me last night about the five guys in the company. Yeah, that, so no. so there's a, you know, publicly held company and you've got six guys that, you know, went to school together, they graduate and they decided, hey, we're starting entry level. Every single opportunity that you get to talk about how great I am, and they're telling their, their buddies, you know, do that talk to the big boss, tell them how wonderful I am. And every chance that I get to talk to your boss about how great you are, I'll do the same. And we'll give each other the accolades. We'll talk about how great we are. And so they did this. So what was happening is they would continuously get promoted so much so that all of them ended up being vice president of the organization. And one of them popped up to CEO of the company. And wow. what happens so often is again with women is again, because of that, feeling of, you know, gosh, if I go ahead and point out how well, you know, my peer is doing or, you know, my girlfriend's doing, I'm going to lose that opportunity. You know, I won't be looked at and I'm competing for that one seat. And that's where as women, it's, you know, we represent, and you know this already, Candace and Pete, we talked about this, as women represent 78% of the consumer, 85% mm -hmm. of the decision maker. And in some households, you know, it's like women represent 95% of the decision maker, like Pete's house, for example. <laughs> right. Right? No, <laughs> that's, gonna love you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So what do you do? What can we do to change it? How can we create an environment for women to empower them? 
I think it starts with them. It does it starts with them? They have to have that that self esteem and be able to to have a. You know what? Actually, they just changed the way that women look at each other. That's a really good place to start because we look at magazines. We're never going to look like that. I can't walk in airbrushed. Maybe I could. It'll cost me a thousand dollars, but. In the end, we have to have the confidence as women to even walk through the door. And if we could just get ourselves up, get through the door, then tackle each dilemma and each roadblock one at a time. We have a tougher time. It's a proven fact of getting that job. But I think it's just being, staying on top of it and doing what it takes to get where you need to go. Don't be afraid to do it. What about you, Absolutely. Michelle? I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's uh, running for uh, Congress right now, and she and I were having lunch yesterday and she said, you know, she's an attorney and she says, yeah, my first job, I walked in and I was all men and I walked in and they looked at me and started giving me their coffee order. And very <laughs> politely she looked at them and she had to pull herself together because she wanted to, you know, like get angry and she realized, you know, they don't know what they don't know. I need to educate them. And so she just said, no, I'm not here to get your order. You know, I'm an attorney. This is what we're doing. And it just, you know, in, in going through and kind of listening, it's, you know, if women, if we can support one another, one of the things that we're doing, and Pete, I shared this with you last night, is looking at each industry and looking at, you know, women that are in the industry and putting the spotlight on all the great things that they're doing. And how do we pull right. those women together and take those subject matter experts and start crossing you know, information and helping out and, and do like those six guys did, you know, how do we start supporting one another and, and, and give the high fives and, you know, point out, I had one conversation with, uh, there was a lady in Silicon Valley. She's, um, top, top executive. She won for the top 10 most influential women in Silicon Valley. And wow. I was sitting with her, a big sponsor of ours, and I was sitting with her, and her name's Michelle, and I said, you know, we need to send a press release out. We need to tell everybody about your award, and I mean, this is amazing. And she looks at me, and she says, don't do that. I don't want you to do that. And I said, why? And she goes, because I don't want to be a target. I don't want to have a target on my back. And I thought, I go, that is exactly why we Women don't succeed. send this out. And we don't succeed is because women, you know, the more of us that are doing that and, and, and the more of us can get excited about someone else's successes and really embrace it and know that, that that's, that's how you come together. And, and you have the women's club, not the boys club, but the women's club, and we start supporting each other. So she looked at me and she says, you know what, you're absolutely right. And that's what we did. We sent it out and it was positive. Good for you. It's great that you were able to talk her into it. I got into the National Association of Professional Women a couple of weeks back, and they said the same thing. You need to utilize press releases. It'll help bring you up to the level that you're trying to achieve. And at the same time, she was actually telling me that she herself was afraid to do that. And I felt horrible. My first question was, why? Yeah. I mean, the whole point that we're in this business, in any business at all, is to make that achievement. So if you need the, the arm up to help, the women are there. We're all around. We need to start utilizing each other and not be afraid to say, hey, this is what I did. And I don't, I may not shoot 300 round of golf with, you know, Tom over there, but I bet he can't raise my five kids. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and I tell people, I said, you know, there's just a small handful of women that we're always talking about. It's the, you know, the Michelle Obamas, the Sheryl Sandbergs, the Michelle Pattersons, the I, right. I threw that in there. Yeah, that was good. That was good. <laughs> good plug. <time. laughs> but, um, but, but in all seriousness is, you know, who are the clubhouse leaders? I mean, let's look about construction. You know, Candace is, you know, you are hitting a home run, you know, to use some analogies from, from our, our, our men. But we need to talk more and look at each industry. And it's shown that women need to have that role model, that visual role model. They need to um, have someone that they can look at. And right now in TV um, and media, I mean, we simply, we just don't have that. We, right. we don't have those, those uh, role models to look at. And so that's why it's so important uh, to your comment earlier about women need to step up and celebrate their successes and show other women, you know, I can have a family and I can go ahead and run a very successful business. I don't have to make the decision to not have either. You know, you might not be able to do it all at the same time, 
but you can have you can have that balance. You can. Absolutely. And you know, I think we were talking last week, Georgia and I, about the fact that a lot of women are so much harder on themselves because they feel they fall short of what society tells them that they should be. And that is a huge portion of it is being a mom and trying to hold down that job and trying to find that balance. And in Pete's 21 day challenge, and I'm glad by the way that he started it for women because I'm actually enjoying it this time. Don't tell him I said that. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. I, I know, but I'm actually excited because it's, it makes me feel safe enough to be able to stick it out there and say, you know what, I am struggling here and this is my final goal. I, ha I will find this way to balance. And if it means that my daughter sits and does the filing with me or does the accounting with me, we're going to set that role model for them and I'm still going to be able to spend that time with my daughter so she has that one-on-one -on -one time where it's just the two of us. Oh, well, I got to tell I, you, man, don't, yeah, you're going to bring, you're talking to Michelle. This girl <laughs> drags, we didn't even drag her. I mean, this, so, so Michelle's daughter is, is 16 and work her one way of those. <laughs> on to, well, okay, so check this out. So Michelle's so speaking at, on a, on a, um, on a radio show. And Jacqueline works her way onto the radio show by by getting onto Michelle's computer, finding the phone number, calling the radio station and saying, hey, after you're done re interviewing the CEO of the Women's Conference, of the California Women's Conference, how would you like to interview the president of the uh, California Women's Conference youth program? And completely made up a program, made up a title, and got put on the radio right after her, got taken to the UN. I mean, this is something where... Wow. This is what I love about Michelle. She's included her family. One of the big, I, I kept thinking about this today, Michelle. It you helps, saying, doesn't it? It's, it well, her saying to me, the first thing she said to the UN was, I appreciate the UN for not making me choose between family and business. And man, that's, wow. I still can't forget that. I don't even that know statement. what to that's say to that. That's such a powerful <laughs> comment, right? And you said something to that effect, right? Even if it wasn't those well, words. You know, um, well, two things. One is, and I'm, I'm super, super, it's, I spent, I was 17 years in recruiting, 13 years, I was the youngest uh, vice president working for a publicly held company. I, the only reason why I was actually at the birth of my kids was because I physically had to birth them. <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband jokes with me, he's like, career woman, you know, I mean, literally trying to figure out how to manage. So I missed so much stuff. I mean, horrifically. It hurts. It's I hard. Mean, it hurts. It hurts. You it know, you, uh, you know, it's embarrassing. You look back and you think. So I made a decision that I was no longer going to do that. I was no longer going to miss uh, those opportunities. And so, you have the opportunity every day to make decisions. You know, are you in alignment with your values? Are you in alignment with your goals? And you know, sometimes those decisions can be really tough. And so I got this phone call from the UN and it was, you know, Michelle, will you come? We'd love for you to be a speaker and be a part of the dinner and, and also speak. And I said, you know, absolutely. What's the date? And the date was February 26. And I knew right away my daughter was turning 16. So she comes, the, she comes back and I said, you know, thank you so much, but I'm, you know, please keep in mind, but I'm not going to be able to be there. So they call back a couple hours later and they say to me, bring her with you, bring wow. her with you. And so I said, okay, wonderful. So we head off to the UN and I'll never forget when I walk in to the room, it's, you kind of get this, you know, overwhelming feeling because it's like you see it on TV, you have all the mics and the earpieces and people talking different languages. And so I'm up there and I, I, I open with, I want to thank the United Nations because I didn't have to opt out. I could be a mom and celebrate my daughter's 16th birthday and I could come and speak to the UN and my daughter's 16th birthday is today. And in the very back, this lady stands up and on the top of her lungs, she starts singing happy birthday and oh, my daughter's no. in the second row and they nudge her, she stands up in the entire United Nations is singing happy birthday. Oh my and God. It was the most surreal experience. And what was so neat was the, one of the ambassadors, he says, in all my 30 years, I have never heard the UN sing happy birthday. And he goes, this is why women need to be involved. Women create moments. And Absolutely. my daughter, it was so neat. And my daughter then stands up, you know, now 16, 
And she says to everyone, she says, I want to thank the United Nations for changing my life today. She goes, because of what you gave me today, she goes, my mission is to help girls my age have the same experience that you gave me. And there was not a dry eye. I mean, the entire place was like, wow. And this kid, my 16-year-old, comes back, and she starts going to town building out the entire you know, youth program for the California Women's Conference and for Women Network. And so it really changed her life. It really, really changed her life. And it was just such a neat experience. And I thought, had I not been in check with what was important to me, because I, I know me, I would not have been able to forgive myself. And you have a 16-year-old too, Candace, and you think about those yeah. things. Like, I'll never have that moment with my daughter. You know, so right. to be able to make that and then have it come back where, you know, she will always remember that time, always. In her you life. know, Last Friday night, you probably didn't get the opportunity to see the show, but it was my daughter's 18th birthday. Oh! So she was patiently waiting on the other side of the camera for us to get done, and we ended up going to the casino that was local because that's what she was going to do with or without me. <laughs> that's right. But it's the fact that we're the kids know we have a good work ethic, but they also need to know that they come first. So I think what you did is absolutely incredible, and the fact that you were willing to put your own ambitions aside to help your daughter and be with your daughter is absolutely incredible so more women should hear that story for sure well and, awesome. and I mean just to be totally honest is I did feel I mean trust me it was like okay what did I just do like what if I don't have another opportunity to be able to what you know I did right. I mean, truthfully I had I, I really kind of did the you know and you, we do think that and and again I think that there's so many women that again think okay I can't have a family I can't because I'm not going to be able to get past that ceiling and and I'm here to tell you you absolutely can you, you know what your daughter just proved that the ceiling doesn't exist you just have to be at the right place at the right time and if we could get that message across to every woman whether she's five years old or a hundred years old I think it's a good place to start well and think about if all of us keep doing that if everybody does that, then you're not going to have, you know, women that are feeling like, oh, I'm going to have a target on my back. Or, right. you know, it, it's so interesting because you have women that will get asked the question, well, how, you know, how do you balance five kids? Is anyone asking your husband? Well, how do you balance five kids? They're not asking that. They ask the moms, No, they though. don't. Right. They don't. You know, and, and why, I mean, I look at that. It's like, why am I getting asked that? That should not yeah. even be a question that comes up. You know, I'd like to say it's an insult, but more and more lately, I'm almost proud of that question. I'm thinking, if you ask that question, that means maybe I can help you do that because maybe it's not something that you can do. So I figure I've had a lot of help in the last, just actually the last year. And I wish somebody could have told me back then it was doable because I had to find out the hard way. <laughs> well, let's you talk have to about, find let's, that balance. Let's talk about some <clears throat> actionable things that people can do if they're listening. Um, so okay. I'm, I'm a woman listening right now, and I, I feel that way. I feel trapped. I feel like, um, man, I don't know what to do. And, and my boss is, you know, rude, and, and he, he looks down on me because I'm a woman, but I need the job. And so what are some things that they can do to rise above? Because how do you address something like that? Like, here's a really big one, okay? Let's talk about this, sexual harassment. How do you address that? Because from uh, a male perspective- wait, 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 Pete, 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 I have to stop you for one minute. I don't know, I'm sure that you're actually coming across this problem as well lately, but I can't believe you just brought this up. I have had two people, and it's funny as well, because Georgia and I just had this discussion last week. More and more people internationally, Africa, India, uh, people that, for whatever reason, Facebook has become this medium, which, and don't get me wrong, it is an absolutely critical tool in order to, to help you to succeed. Right. But there's somewhere along the line has said, okay, just because you are a, a powerful businesswoman, or maybe just a stay-at-home mom, you are a woman, they see your photo, and I kid you not, I even have an intern that I had to explain this to, I constantly have pop-ups at the bottom of my screen all day and all night, and it infuriates Omar, guys telling me what they want me to do to them. So let oh, me just be wow. the one to tell you, there is a line. I don't have guys any guys telling me what they want to do to me. That. 
No, it was bad. I have had some really bad ones. And I had to take an intern because we just got too big. I mean, in one week alone, we had something like 1,300 new Facebook. And I want to say it was 1,200, no, 1,600 in LinkedIn. Nice. And so I finally took on an intern and I said, I need help. And now this poor little, you know, 18 year old girl is seeing these derogatory comments. Some of them can't even speak phonetically. They're, they're sheer phonetics. I mean, we're talking, um, you might be the letter U. And right. so it's really, it's, I just wish that I could get guys to understand that we have a brain and well, I, yeah, I that, women, we're not, we're not, we're not addressing those idiots because there's really nothing. I mean, those guys are just stupid, right? But let's talk half about of the men, but, half of them. So women need to change the way that they're dealing with it themselves and see themselves as not an object, but a force to be reckoned with, you know, well, and, they have and, that Pete, and Pete, let me just throw in there because I would agree with Candace. It's the, 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 the problem is we are addressing those guys because they're everywhere. What's happened is in our world today, literally today, and it's not just in overseas, one out of three women are beaten or raped in their lifetime. One out of three. Okay, so that's one. bad, right? I get, I get mm -hmm. that. That's bad. How? So my question was, because now we're going to run, jump down another rabbit hole with that, that statement. If, <laughs> Sorry. How do we, how do women address the fact of feeling uncomfortable in the workplace, feeling put down in the workplace, feeling belittled in the workplace, feeling whatever in the workplace, how do they address that and move up? Because here's the thing. If, if a woman comes up in the workplace and is like, yeah, well, you know, John is, is sexually harassing me. And, and he says this right now, she's a stick. Nobody even wants anything to do with her because they don't know what right. or this or that from a male perspective, if I'm goofing around and I'm like, man, you are drop dead sexy. Right. Or, or, um, like, man, I said this to somebody, I was like, man, you're banging hot. Right. And, I'm, I'm just thinking of me being a kid, man. I'm just thinking of, you know, just like, like, like banging, like banging drums, right? Hot. But that can totally be interpreted as a different statement. And I almost turned white when I said it because I realized how it could be interpreted. And I felt really uncomfortable. And I was like, all right, I'm out of here. And I just, I just turned around and walked away because I didn't know what to say. I mean, it was, I just felt so dumb. So how do we do adjust that line? Where is that line? When when can somebody make a comment and just being funny? But it, it, but at the same time, I think a lot of it, a lot of it's common sense, and I'm sure she will probably agree with me. It starts with the woman herself. The woman needs to know that she has value, and she needs to know that she is worthy of being treated with respect. Because if she doesn't feel like she is, she's going to continue to be beat down. So well, then it'll just be following yeah. that chain of command and then going up to the the immediate. Start with your immediate because sometimes if you start jumping heads, and I would even say if it's not your your boss, talk to the person first that's doing it and see if you can get on the same page and say, you know, because a lot of times they don't recognize the fact that they're doing it. Right. So start small. Start small. Baby steps up. And if it doesn't work out and you've hit the ceiling and you become that stigma, I'd say look for a new job. Don't let anybody tell you you're not valuable and that you're not worth making it to the top and not having to endure that kind of abuse. And maybe sometimes too, that that type of pain is the pain that they need, even need in order to find a better job, right? It pushes to me. Find more to value. this day, it pushes me. Every day I deal with it. What do you I think, think about you, that, Michelle? I think you teach, well, two things. One is I think you teach people how to treat you. I really do. And I yeah. think what happens is, and I can remember, you know, being um, in my early 20s and having, you know, Jacqueline and my kids are 17 months apart. So right away, you know, having Chase immediately after. And I would have rather told, you know, my parents that I was a teen, you know, pregnant as a teen than go and tell my boss who I had just went out on maternity leave that I was pregnant again. And I can remember him being irate. I mean, he truly looked at me like it was I, a negative thing. It was so negative to the point where, when you looked in my work plan, he actually put in the work plan. You know, you will be involved in the day-to-day -day operations during your maternity leave. And and I did it. Wow. I, I was I was actively involved. I mean, you wouldn't even know that I took that time. And it's unfortunate because again, you have that guilt. And you look back and play makeup for it. But I think so often, you know, it starts with, you know, you taking care of you and, mm -hmm. you know, looking at you've got this family and 
how can I go ahead and make sure that I'm taking care of, of me and taking care of the family and teaching others how to treat. And it's okay to say, you know, this is what I need your help with. You know, help me to be able to go ahead and carve this out. Um, the other piece is to answer your question, Pete, about, you know, what do you do? It's, you know, seek out, you know, the help of, of other women. Um, there, there's some great, great leaders out there that are more than happy to help and give advice. Um, I do think Candace's comment was right on. And what she said was, before you start jumping up, you know, to all different levels, you know, talk to that individual. They might not even realize that they said something inappropriately. And They're used to the boys' world. Exactly. The boys' club is always existing. <laughs> yep. I, I can remember I was in mortgage and, you know, and again, very male-dominated industry and... I was sitting there and I'm talking about a loan and the one loan guy puts his hand on my leg and starts like rubbing and he goes, no, let's make sure we get a really good deal. And I look at him, I grab his hand and I'm like, okay, what part of that, I go, you're going to get no deal. <laughs> <laughs> what part of that is okay? And so for me, it was right away addressing it, responding. Um, you know, had I gone up the food chain right away without actually giving him an opportunity to correct the behavior. Um, you know, you wouldn't have, have a job. Teaching. Yeah, so I think that's important. So I really appreciate what you said. Is you know, hit it head on. You know, give the benefit of the doubt. It's like uh, it's not okay, and go from there. Right. And I'm you know thinking. what? And to actually build on that really quick before we jump to another topic, I think that you are absolutely dead on when you say you teach people how to treat you. I think that when Pete's talking about girls that are stuck in the situation. Let me tell you I am the most guilty as it gets and that's that's a pretty hard statement to make. I you allowed stuck. you were stuck. Right. I allowed my ex husband to treat me the way he did. So for those girls that sit there and say, well he treats me bad, in some cases, don't get me wrong, there is cause for fear, but some of that is just me. I was the one that allowed him to talk to me that way and to treat me the way that he did. It took me standing up and leaving for me to realize I didn't have to live that way. So for all those women that are out there, listen to Michelle, listen to me. You know, I say this every time, whether we're on the radio or on here, call us, I will answer the phone at 2 a.m. You're not stuck. Just set the example of how you want to be treated, and that's another good place to start. Absolutely. I, I love the well, fact that, that, that we are here to help, and, and that's, that's a reality of it. Let me let me ask you this now, Michelle. Um, let's get into some some other types of uh, of of actionable information. What are some of the obstacles that you've had setting up? Give me three different obstacles you've had in your life and how you overcame them. One obstacle being just in life general, uh, maybe with your husband, family, whatever. Right. One obstacle being in business that was specific to being a woman. And then one obstacle that you're looking to overcome with the women's conferences, right? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Well, th this is an easy one because the, the two go hand in hand or the no, three. You can't say that. No, don't say one. Don't say one and it fits all the molds. You can't do that. They got to be three <laughs> I, different I'm, things. I'm going to throw you. So my first year doing the conference, I had hired a sponsorship company. They had all the right answers. Um, they were telling me, you know, we're pipelining $7 million in funding. It's a multi-million dollar event. So things were looking really, really good. I was also doing my fundraising, but these guys were coming in. We, we're we're going to bring in $7 million. So I thought if we do a third of that, we'll be in great shape. Out of the total $7 million, they came in with 100000 so 17 days prior to the conference, I was 1.8 million in a deficit. Oh. And I can remember those 17 Absolutely. days like it was yesterday and feeling like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And my investor said to me that 17 days before, Michelle, shut the event down. Shut it down. And I, I said, I don't think I'll do that today. <laughs> I said, oh, we're not going to shut that down. That's what happens is so often is with women, and especially when it gets to the million-dollar range, or they just, we run the other way. We think You that get we scared. You get scared. And, and I was scared, but I also knew 
There was no way that I was shutting this event down. And so I ended up going and literally calling everybody I've ever met and started just dialing for dollars. And I had some people that, you know, were arguing with me, you know, you should shut it down. I had others that were very helpful and supportive. And I'll never forget this. So I'm married to a controller for a big company. And he made the comment to me and he said, um, you know, he's very, very supportive. I mean, great, great guy. But he's also a CPA. Very grounded. He's a CPA. So I thought, you know, it's 17 days before, I'm going to sleep that night. And I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and let him know that I'm $1.8 million. I'll wait a few days. Let's see if I can raise some money. He's on a need-to-know basis. He doesn't need to know <laughs> tonight. So I go to sleep, and I'm literally doing somersaults. I'm having nightmares. I'm, you know, breaking out the sweat. <laughs> so I wake up. That's sad. It was really sad. I wake up, and I'm, I've kicked him, and I woke him up. And he puts the light on and he goes, what is your deal? Like, what is this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. What is and your deal? I look at him and I'm like, Eric, I've totally done it. Like I've really blown it. You know, I'm getting ready to you know, bankrupt this family and I'm 1.8 million in the hole. And this is the situation. And this man looked at me and he says, you know what, Michelle? He goes, I've been married to you for 15 years and I've watched you pull things out of your you fill in the blank. <laughs> and he goes, go to bed. He goes, everything seems worse, you know, in the middle of the night. He goes, go to sleep. He goes, you will be fine. And I can remember going to sleep and thinking, you know, wow. I mean, how cool is that? Again, you know, going back to what we talked about is, you know, who's your support system? Yeah, you, know, you need that team. Who is your team? You know, who who do you have that's there to support you? And And it was great because... I did. I got up that next morning. I started dialing for dollars. We ended up going into the event raising 1.65 million wow. in, in 17 days, and it was. I mean, it was amazing. Um, and it was funny because the investor, I come off the stage, and Helen Reddy just got done singing "I'm Women, Hear Me Roar," and you had 300 exhibitors and 150 speakers, and it was just amazing. And he comes up to me and he's crying, he's in tears. And I look at him and I'm like, what is going on? And he looks at me and he goes, I feel so bad, I told you to quit. And I said, everybody was telling me to quit, <laughs> lots of people. Right. Like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, you know what? And, and, and he's like, well, you know, and I said, but, but that's okay. I go, because what happens is, and that's what we need to realize is, sometimes people will tell you to quit, but it's not, it's not because they don't love you or because they don't think you can do it. A lot of times it's their own fear. It's their own security that's then getting pushed right. onto you. And, and I learned such a valuable lesson. And to your last question, Pete, about today, you know, with, with Women Network, I mean, to take it and go global, you know, and have people. I mean, sometimes I'll tell people, you know, oh, we're going here, we're going here. And they'll look at me. And they'll say, you know, you can't do it. And I just chuckled to myself thinking, okay, clearly you don't know me because the last thing <laughs> yeah. I need, you know, tell me I can't do something. Watch me. And That's not familiar, Pete? Yes. <laughs> That's why I love the fact that you guys are on here, man. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, and here's the other thing, guys. If you guys have any questions for them um, about anything, let us know. Uh, there was one question where somebody asked, is there any lending um, institutions that are a women based lenders, um, that work with like first time in, you know, investors or anything. Candace, do you know anything about that? Or, and maybe I don't, I've never heard of anything like that, but that could be interesting though. You know what I mean? Uh, I will tell you, I can get them the answer to that question. What I have seen firsthand is that the hard money lenders typically from my experience seem to fall more on a men's world. Um, when you get into more of the 203s, Wells Fargo, the, the mortgage companies, you see a lot more women. So I don't know if it's a simple fact that women are afraid to play hardball. I'm sure that there are financial institutions. And actually, now I'm going to go look and find out because I'd like to know. Because I think be that that would be a energy. fantastic yeah. place to start. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's actually some 
of phenomenal companies that are out there and organizations that do go in. Their requirements are to have um, a female on the executive team and so that you have that's true you know, when they look at the team and so one player you know at the C level is part of actually running the operation there's there's um, there's several that are out there that we work with um, I just met there's a lady by the name of Barbara Boxer not the politician Barbara Boxer up in LA and I was her, just gonna say man that name sounds familiar <laughs> yeah no, so she's a she's a venture capitalist they go in they help uh, really women who are putting organizations together. We had a um, women uh, technology piece and it was amazing to see these women come together and asking so many questions like, you know, how do I go about getting funding? You know, what's right. the process of putting the business plan together? What's the, it's, because we're so new to that space that there's so many women out there, they just have so many questions about it. And you know, I loved, maybe, um, I had a. Go ahead, Candice, what? Maybe we're, while we are together, maybe we can yeah, lay down yeah. some skills for them as a way to start tonight. That's one of the things that I kind of like to do if you're, open, if you're up for it. Love it. Um, and I was telling you earlier before we went on air, I actually had visited uh, two different websites, one that was written by a woman and one that I believe was askme.com. Not dropping any names, men. Um, but do you want to go on those websites were... and check it out? You should absolutely. I, I mean, have you want to go on that right now and do it live? Uh, you can. Askmen.com was the second one, and that was actually not a bad place to start. It was shorter to the point as to where the women tend to drag things out, and they're a lot more specific. So, if you want to go on to askmen.com, and it was actually the top six skills to be successful. So I thought that it was a really, really uh, unique list and looking at it from a man's point of view kind of keeps it in perspective, I think, for women so that we know how this they're seeing right us. Ask, ask, um, okay, that was not what I wanted to see down there. What This is askmen.com. <laughs> it was askmen.com. It was um, six skills to be successful. Okay, let, <laughs> now I've got to be careful of what I'm looking up. Um, six, <laughs> Man, skills. Google it. Google it. It's faster. It'll take you right to the article. Six skills to be what? But if successful. you Google it, six skills to be successful. <clears throat> okay. And one of them, I think, was really was the basics of everything is communication. Your ability to speak, communicate. I mean, as as of women, we are already so targeted. Like she's saying, it's it makes things easier if you're able to look and approach somebody and, and to learn simple tools like good eye contact and the way that you're dressed and the way that you carry yourself so that you can be taken seriously and they don't have the opportunity to, to tell us, oh, you're being an irrational woman, you're PMSing. I hate that excuse, by the way. But well, I, I think that. you bring up a good point, Candice, though. It's, it's embracing. I mean, we are great collaborators. We're amazing. I mean, you look at, you look at countries that have fallen. I mean, the women go back in and build and, and come back stronger. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I tell Man, I don't know what's going on. It's with... so weird, right? Because she's talking like she's yeah, all in slow motion. <laughs> uh -oh. Sorry. <laughs> That's what you sound like right now. Uh, okay, now you sound normal again. Okay, keep talking now. You? Yes. So I always, when I talk to companies, I let them know is when you look at companies that have the diversity and they have women and men on their executive level teams and executive committees and the C-suite, those companies flourish. They're, they're, they they right. reach their money. Money goes from their bottom line. I mean, they have the success. It's companies that are one gender, and it's it's that way too with all women. When you have that diversity, and women who embrace, you know, we are natural collaborators. You know, we go and we nurture. We're great at communication, and so right. when we can bring that to the table, you know, it directly affects the bottom line. You know, I think. Okay. Does anybody else? <clears throat> that was weird. Did anybody else hear that? Yeah. It, you went, I did. Well, I think, and it just started tweeting. It was really, really, really weird. 
All right. I don't know. I didn't hear it. Now you're good. Go ahead. That, I think it was coming from you, but go ahead. That was, you were talking in your um, Tinkerbell voice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is that better? Cute. You're good. <laughs> okay. So I was just saying that I think that women have a unique set of skills that it's not that men aren't capable of. We just excel at them. Things like organization. Uh, the way that we think logically, I think, is a huge advantage for us in business because we tend to look at things from almost that mothering standpoint where we are able to take a step back and say, okay, this is what it takes to make the house run, the bills paid, the kids taken care of, and we just move that and utilize that in the business world. So I think our, our ability to multitask uh, definitely, definitely, I think, um, as a whole makes us excel. And we also seem to be better a lot of the time at, it, at being accountable and, and budgeting. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. What do you think, Michelle? You're being absolutely. Of, are you just well, if you look at ah, 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 mode? How about now? <laughs> yeah, good. You're good. You're good. No. Um, what historically though, if you look at historically, is again, you know, that's why with women, if we can come together naturally, where the we get in there from a community standpoint. You know, we're the gatherers, you know, the nurturers. I mean, we go in and we support one another. We, we do it very, very well. So it's it's being able to make sure that that, that synergy takes place. And that's for us as a company. That's what we focus on. Now, that's a good plan. Candice, what you were talking about, I have that up here now. So the six skills, uh, skill one is uh, speaking skills. Two is confidence. Did you already have that? Did you already go over this whole thing? Uh, not too much, just basically kind of raced over it. But I think, again, confidence comes back to the way a woman sees herself, the way that she dresses, the way she carries herself and knows that she has value and she can take on that man or maybe just men in general. It depends on what business that she's actually in, I guess. What? Okay. Um, let's see. What was the first email address she gave before askmen.com? Actually, I didn't give you one before that. If you look up skills to be a successful women as a, a, a whole, I think it was plural, it was women. Okay. It so, came up and it had a list of 12 things. It was 12 steps to form success for women, which I thought was pretty cool. So it came over a self-discipline, good note-taking. Basically, it was the fundamental uh, portions of making and being successful in business. So little things like organization, business, critical thinking, uh, research the fact that women aren't it's like men don't like asking for directions women will take that time and we google we will take that time and do our research to make sure that when we speak nine times out of ten we're doing it informed so that makes us a lot more credible as well got it um, and networking networking was huge women love to network we kind of excel at it I think it's easier I don't know about you Michelle but I like talking to men it's easier to talk to a man Women sometimes can be catty because we're threatened by each other. And I would much rather talk to a man nine times out of 10. They're just well, easier to talk to. I think too, though, but if you, if you look at the dynamic, again, studies have been on this, but if you have all women, you don't have that same dynamic. They're not trying to compete for that attention. Right. That's what we've done. We've competed for that attention for so long. Isn't that the worst? Okay, who wants, who wants to talk to employees. me next? Who wants we to hire employees though all the time, and honest to goodness, it's bad. We have to weed them out little by little because you always have the one in there that throws everything out of whack. You have the one that's always just starting the the talk behind your back and the cattiness, and that's so unfortunate. It really throws a wrench in a company. You need that good team, like you're saying. How do you build that? How do you ensure that you create that kind of environment? Ooh, you want to take that one? <laughs> well. Um, in fact, Pete, we were talking about this last night. So we've got these women network salons where we're pulling together in each industry is the top women and, and talking, having masterminds and really discussing this and networking and doing it cross companies, like cross in divisions. Newport Beach, Newport Beach at uh, Black Star Frost. We'll be doing that a couple times a week. And I've already been reaching out today talking to different women CEOs and it's time. I mean, I think women are feeling like, okay, how do we support one another? How it, we need to step up and it starts with us, you know, and, Absolutely. And I always ask the question, it's like, well, what did you do today to lend a helping hand? You know, who are you mentoring? You know, who are you, who are you supporting? What if they're brand new? What if, what if they don't 
could could they mentor somebody if they don't know a lot of information or if they if they're not a success if they're not a ceo in a company can they still be a mentor well i think that goes back to what we were talking about earlier is the number two comment that candace had was confidence of course again it goes back to is women think uh -huh. that we don't have it it's it's amazing when you look at statistics you know, only 2% of women actually think that they're attractive. Only 2% 2, 2 see themselves as beautiful. Okay, how pathetic is that? You that know, is crazy. Is pathetic. And, you know, women go in and, and, again, we'll second guess ourselves. We'll critique ourselves. We're our own worst enemy. Honest we, to God, we are. <laughs> and women out there, you know we're right. <laughs> yeah, we so are. What, we what do we do to change that? Honestly, we're talking about men, men, um, the masterminds, right? So if I'm a woman in California and I live around Newport Beach, when, when, I mean, when are those things going to be being put on? We did talk about that a little bit last night. So how do we, how do we, how do we grow that? Because obviously, everybody right now listening, you know, we've got we've got like 15 people right now listening, and then also we're going to have what the downloads on this is last week. I think it hit something like 150 or 200. Um, I know that we have a lot of local people that listen on this particular webinar as well, and it's growing big time. My, my question then becomes, if they wanted to tap into this resource and they wanted to start meeting and they wanted to start joining with you, how can they do that? So they can go ahead. They can check on womennetwork.com. Um, we'll publish those dates. There'll be two a week. Um, we're looking at Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll start out with 12 women doing a mastermind uh, during the day and then in the evening open it up to 75 to 100 women and we will go through we'll have a keynote speaker but then open it up you know candace made a great comment women love to network we want to know each other right. and so setting up that environment and being able to go ahead and and share who to talk to and and what that looks like and we're already seeing individuals come from definitely all of Southern California, but from other parts of the state. So the, the 12, you need to be actually invited to come and we're going through and looking at, you know, in each industry, you know, who are the clubhouse leaders so that they can come out. And then the next step is being able to match those individuals with mentees so that we can go ahead and have that dialogue happening back and forth. So, so then, then if I got what you just said, if you're a leader in the industry, they should contact you. And if they want to become a leader in the industry, they should contact you. And if they are a woman, they should contact you. And if they are alive, they should contact you. If they're alive. Well, if they're breathing. I you, Pete, I will tell you this. So we had my first year taking on the conference, we had 3% men show up. Uh, this past time, this last month, we had 17% men. And... The men are figuring out. I mean, they're again, they're coming in going, wow, women are these decision makers. If I'm a brand, you know, I want to communicate that to that demographic. Well, and yeah. so they're looking at that. And, right. and and when you talk about word of mouth, who who makes that word of mouth happen faster than anybody? It's it's always the women will will help travel that information, right? Way more than guys, because guys don't care. I don't tell anybody anything, you know what I mean? Unless I really want to, I mean, personally, right? I, obviously, like I do a lot of talking, but but when it comes to like, what do I use at home and this and that, I don't really share a lot with people that are close to me because I feel like ah, they don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear that, right? But women don't- But see, that's that. part of the reason people fail. I mean, if you can't open yourself up and you're not insecure enough as a man or a woman to open yourself up, how do you let anybody in to help? You got to be willing to take that step. I agree. I, I well, 100%. you guys will laugh. My husband says there's three forms of advertisement, the telephone, the television, and tell Michelle. So <laughs> for me, it's, I want to my husband. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody to know. It's like, no, you need, especially if it's something that I believe in, it's like, no, you've got to get on board with this. You've got to be a part of this. You know, you need to know my friend. This is what she's doing. This is what she's all about. Yeah. So. But your excitement is driving that. That's what's so amazing. I mean, the fact that you're the one standing there saying, no, listen, check this person out. You're guiding the traffic in a way that's going to help that person. So we need more people like you that are strong enough to stand up in front of 2,000 people and say, listen, let me connect you with the person that you need to make you successful. And there's just not enough of that. Women are, like you're saying, are 
are hitting, you know, they're butting heads. So help them, help them connect to each other. And I will help you in any way that I can. And I know Pete will help. And I think what you're doing is amazing. Well, and, and this is helpful too. And I think going back, you know, you, you look at the construction world. I mean, you talk about being a trendsetter, you know, talk <laughs> about being able to go ahead and set an example. I mean, truly, you know, to me, that's, you know, that right there, you know, if we can just set those examples, I mean, it's, you know, we talked about having these daughters. Um, I mean, they look at us and it's like, there's, they don't have that fear. I think later on we start developing that or we get exposed to that. It's like they're, they're following. Well, is that our true or, or were you raised differently? Were you raised where, where you weren't lifted up and, and exalted like you were? I mean, what would your parents done if, if they had been called because you sold rocks at school? So, so my parents would have been like high fiving. They, they really okay. would have. I mean, I, <laughs> I thought when I was little, I thought, Oh, I could be anything I want to be. I mean, I literally, I have my mom and my dad, my dad was a police officer, 35 years. My mom ran a daycare wow. out of our home, you know, and I mean, just hard, hard, hardworking people, both the oldest in their family. I'm the oldest and they had the mindset of you can be and do anything. And, and look at what I you're doing, Michelle. You, yeah, that's you so live, important. I mean, you are living and doing everything, right? That's the reality of the situation. And what we need to do is, what about the people that aren't? What about the women that aren't where you are, right? What, was, their, was their childhood different? And if it was, how do we affect that now, right? How yeah, we... every, every single situation is different, though, because I grew up with, with a mom and a dad. Actually, I had four parents, if you want to know the truth, because mine were divorced when I was eight. But all four of my parents were always there. They always instilled the right values. I just fell in love with the wrong person, and that was my crutch. That's what drug me down. 24 years it took for me to wake up one day, look at my children, and say, this isn't working. There has to be a change. So I think to some extent it's a trigger. It's what's around that person's life. They need to make that decision for themselves that this is what they want to do. I think what you're surrounded with growing up definitely impacts that. But again, it's got to be that person's decision that they want to take that step. I got you. I, um, yeah, you know, that was good. And I, I think it really does. It, it, it does start with you because you can hear about it from others, but it, it does start with you. I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't hold their hand. Michelle. I'm sure you'd be willing to. I'd be willing to. But in the end, we're going to go home at some point during the night and they're going to be on their own. So if they can't find what's driving them and find their why, which is what we've talked about in the past, it's a really rough path to take. Absolutely. Now, if, if you guys had to give three, not words, but three ideas of advice and you have a young woman coming up um, or, or a 35 year old woman, it doesn't really matter what age she is. Right. But, they want a different life. They don't like the way that their life is going right now. They don't like the life that they're living right now. So Candace, what are the three things that you would say to that person in order to help them start the change, right? Because obviously flipping a switch isn't going to, it's not going to be right away, right? Right. And we want it to I be, but that's not a reality. So what are the three things that you could give somebody that would be like something they could hold on to? That would make the difference right away for them? That would make them, that would help them start to make a change. What, what are, uh, what are the three That's actually things? a really, really, really easy answer for me. I would tell them first to decide what makes them happy. If they want to go, you know, if them something as simple, we've said the same thing a thousand times, something as simple as maybe just going to the gym, or maybe they need to get out of a marriage, or maybe they need to go to the gym. They need to just, I'm sorry, to a business. Man, I was like, decide. those are the only two options. They got to either you know, get out of the marriage or go really to the gym. <laughs> but Which, they need to make that decision first. That's number one, as to what makes them happy, what they're going to be able to excel. Because if they like it, it's not going to feel like work. It's not going to feel like a chore. Uh, the second decision, I would say, is find why. why you're, what's driving you so that you don't backslide from that decision? So we talked about this before. For me, I have a picture of my kids next to the bed and there's days where I don't want to get up and I don't want to go in. I drag myself up and I get my butt to the office. So that's the second thing I would definitely say is that is massively important is to have that constant push there. And the third, say, third thing I would say is find that team. Build that team of people around you that are going to be supportive. Um, like Michelle was saying, whether it's a husband, uh, maybe it's a teacher, could be a neighbor, 
whatever you know, whatever surrounds you, surround yourself with that team to make yourself successful. And that way you're going to be, again, less likely to regress and much more um, able to move forward. All right. I love it. Michelle, next, uh, same, same, same question. <laughs> this is like, we're, we're so similar. I, I'm loving Candace. So my three <laughs> things would be, I do. My three things would be the first one would be own it. I think what happens is so often is we, we point the fingers. It's, you know, Oh, you know, we're in a bad relationship. It's this person. I can't do this. I think for right. me, one of the things that's so exciting is my problems are my problems. And, you know, I can go in and I can, I can own it where it's not about blaming someone else. If I don't like the way something's going, I can go ahead and change that. I can make that difference and, 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 and really own it. So that's probably the first thing. The second thing is I always like to say is act as if, you know, and you'll hear people, they'll come in and it's, Oh, I want to be in shape. I want to be skinny. It's, and you look at them and they're hundred pounds overweight or <laughs> and it's like, well, well, do you really? Because, you know, I just saw you drink that milkshake or, you know, eat those the double milkshake, the double double. <laughs> And right. so it's, it's, you know, and, and, you know, the last time I worked out was, I gotta you know, lose weight, Michelle. This is ridiculous, man. <laughs> <laughs> As they're, they're just sucking down this double milkshake, right? <laughs> so that's a big one is the act as if, and so look at those habits, you know, what are your daily habits? I love Pete, you know, last night, you know, I was dead dog tired, you know, exhausted, you know, you were over, um, we're hanging out. So I'm going to bed and what did I do? I took a page from you and I'm like, okay, let me write out my goals. You know, what is it? Woo what do I want to create? <laughs> what do I want to Get on the what women's one. Like? What's that? Get on the women's one. Oh, I'll totally do that. Absolutely. I'm, oh. I'm so that, oh, that's, that's going to be fun. What happened? She froze again. Look at her. She just froze. I know. I think we lost her again. Oh, how about now? <laughs> yeah, you're good now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, the third we had this is... for a second. This is what you look like. You were. <laughs> I just hadn't, you hadn't moved yet. So it was, it was awesome. So the last one is, is, uh, the, the, what I was talking to, you know, A S K like ask, you know, ask for the yes. help. Ask, you know, yep. the, the neatest thing that people can do is, be able to give. I mean, it's so fulfilling. And so there's people out there that want to help, but we need to ask. So ask and then receive it. So those would be my three. I love hey, it. Can I just add on to that? If you are going to ask, please at least try to take the advice of the person giving it to you or at least think it through because I don't know about you, but I get it all the time where people will say, well, how do I fix this? Or how do I go about doing that? And I tell them and I make sure that I give them a foolproof plan. They can't possibly screw up. And I kid you not, two days later, how'd it go? I, I don't know. I didn't try it. And this is what happened. <laughs> so I feel bad. I feel like we're letting them down when they don't follow our advice. And it's not the best advice, but I guarantee you a lot of the times we've been where they are now. So Well, it goes back to what we talked about earlier. It's just they own it. You know, I, I learned yes. when I was a kid, I can remember my mom and she made the comment. And, and I said, Mom, do you wish that you were somebody else? Do you wish you were this person and this person has all this money or this person? She goes, no, because I wouldn't have you. I wouldn't have, she goes, I wouldn't have my problems. I wouldn't have, like, that's mine. And, like, you own it. And I keep thinking, you know, my husband and I will be celebrating 18 years of marriage. And absolutely there was times where, you know, I mean, he made my skin crawl. I mean, he, he was just like, <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm sure, you yeah. know. I love it. I can't wait crazy. to tell Eric about this, man. You made her skin crawl. <laughs> you made my skin crawl. Hey, you know what? You can come sleep with me now. You might need to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like you know I you know you own it. It's like I you know it, it it's it's you're in a relationship. It's a partnership, and and you have to own that. And so it's like, what am I going to do, you know, to make that relationship? You know, I want to be in love. I want to have this amazing relationship. And so what? But it takes work. Thanks and I got a her. question real quick for, for the guys listening. Are you guys finding this interesting? Is, is this stuff good? Um, it, do you have any questions too? Cause we've got about maybe 10 more minutes before we're going to, we're going to exit out of this. So hey, at least we're not man bashing. what's that? <laughs> we're not 
We're not man bashing. That's a start. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing any of that. I just want to make sure, again, I know that we're finding our, our legs with this show. I know that we're we're experimenting and we're seeing what works. And, and I love this stuff because I think it's different. I think it's stuff that people aren't necessarily talking about. You know what I mean? And so that might make it uncomfortable or weird or whatever, but I'm okay with that. I just, I, I would love to know what people are thinking. So make sure you talk about it on Facebook, share with us your thoughts um, and all that stuff. And, and again, if you have any questions, just uh, let us know. But anyways, go back girls. You know what? Honestly, it's okay if somebody feels uncomfortable because you can't start changing if you're still standing where you are. So they need to be able to get up. If that means they leave their comfort zone, that means they leave their comfort zone. But our goal is to give them the tools that when they decide to get out of their comfort zone, that we can kind of help guide them and maybe put them in touch with people that will, will better direct them as well. I like so. that. That's absolutely true. Um, what is one thing that you guys <laughs> would like to do and impact the world moving forward? How would you guys like to impact the, the, the communities or anything around you? In a perfect world? Is it like anything goes kind of a moment? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, do you want to go first or? You Go ahead, Candice. You saw. Uh, I, would, I would absolutely love, and I put this on my 21-day my challenge daily. I would absolutely be ecstatic if I could start a weekend educational seminar that was free for women, that offered free daycare Ooh. and free guidance for a numerous uh, amount of issues to, to kind of help guide women and, and say, Hey, you know, you don't have to pay at the door and I'll watch your kids for free. Just get in there and make something out of your life, make the decisions and the changes that you need to make and give them the tools to do that. I really like that. I really That's like cute. that. What do you That's think? About that, Michelle? <laughs> I love that too. Well, I, we, you and I could be doing that together. My, um, what I want to do is I want to be with, involved too. What's, I mean, I don't want to watch the kids or anything, but I want to, I want to get up and motivate them to go do something and make something happen in their life. You would be great at watching the kids. Cause you're like the biggest kid there is. I've I, seen you at Disney. Yeah. But I'm going to box them when they, when it's time to play a game, I play for real. I'm like Adam Sandler and I, I'll throw the ball. And... He like knocks them down. Go on exactly. to Mike Tyson. It's, I'm next. Just don't bite them like the soccer player. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So I have to tell you guys real quick back to the husband thing. So is it okay? I'm how dark is it? Like this room is probably so dark. Yeah, so no, it's we, cool, Vampira. I, I, <laughs> we can call her Elvira. So I have to tell you, I have been I have been asking my husband to change the light bulbs in here for like at least a month. We have these high high ceilings, and so you have to like pull out these. So I'm like Eric, I cannot see in my office. You have to, and so now I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Hey, Google it for you got him. candlelight going by, <laughs> I by yourself. Like, I was like, this is so bad. I would go put, put lights on right now, but there are none, so the bulbs are out. So we'll we'll get that taken care of. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How have you, what have you thought about tonight, Michelle? What have, what have you thought? You know, so so what I'm putting out to the, the, the universe is I'm so excited because we'll have these conferences all over the world, but it's to take on womennetwork.com is to be able to go ahead and have a hundred million women on this community site and when you look at why the conference started 30 years ago it was started because women were opening up businesses and they were failing at a rapid rate and Governor George G. Bajan said let's pull together the different resources you know let's pull women together similar to what you were talking about Candace and let's get these women together and be able to share best practices, to be able to help support one another, you know, who should you be talking to, but be able to have that on a website and have it be global and have the calendar set up where you could see all these different events, all the different things that are happening and really connect the dots. And I always look at too is, you know, with women today, it's, they feel like sometimes they're alone. And they're not. And I mean, can you imagine, even just with the laws that we have, imagine 100 million women showing up, you know, on the steps of Congress or, you know, laws get passed or, you know, right. companies. I mean, things happen. So that, that's my big push and my mission. Well, what do you think? It's about, a good one. What do you think about then changing, like, like we were kind of talking about, and making this, uh, this call be, be women entrepreneurs Brought to you by Women Network. And I, mean, I love that. We grow and we kind of alter this. And maybe we have you guys as co-hosts um, every week. And then we bring on two or three guests and basically have a roundtable with you guys 
talking about specific subjects, right? Specific topics. And, and we can, I mean, they can alter. So one, one week it could be um, about women working in the workplace and how do they, what kind of, what kind of practices could they use to stop sexual harassment or to improve efficiency or whatever, like down to dress the way they should dress. Right. Because there's, there's a, there's a way to dress professionally and there's a way to dress slutty. I mean, there's just, I, there's, there's two different things, right? You got one or the other. And a lot of times women confuse the fact. And so they dress with their, their shirts down to, you know, instead of it's, I am awesome. Right. You've got the shirt going down way down here. And, and then they're leaning over the table and then they're going, I don't understand why he looks at me like a sexual object. I think it's very, very unfair. Yeah. And well, there's good attention, there's attention, and then there's negative attention, and you don't want the negative attention, and part of the, the tools that we probably should be giving women is to find out where that line is, because I know I a lot of the times people think that's the quickest route to the top, just getting that attention, but what they don't realize is they're creating their own glass ceiling. They're saying, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm to be looked at as an object, I don't have a brain, and they're counterproductive. And, you know, so I, you have to I, find out where that line is. It's like Miss California, I think, is a great... Um, organization, right? We're going up there tomorrow to, uh, I'm going to interview, uh, whoever gets crowned Miss California tomorrow when they get crowned, which is awesome. You know what I mean? That wow, I got this opportunity to, to shoot up there. And at first I didn't even want any part of it because I was like, man, I don't want to go in, in, and interview Bambi. Right. I mean, like I've got no, I seriously, there's no way well, I want to drive up and interview women as an object, Pete. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, gong, 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 bubble gum and, and just like dumb as a rock. Like, I don't want any part of that. It's a waste of my time. I don't care who they are. And then I met Marina and Sarah and it's like, oh my gosh, she was amazing. She was so smart and intel. Well, I, I, I don't know why I always do that. I say smart and intelligent, beautiful and attractive. And I sit there and utilize like dual meaning words. But the reality was she changed the way that I looked at that and are we? We're. I feel like I'm on one of those rides at Disneyland right now with Michelle. I just, I'm just swinging all over the place, man. It's it's crazy. Um, but the 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 fact is that that organization is all about empowering women and 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 really creating a better atmosphere and creating a sisterhood of success. You know what I mean? Yeah, they that, they are. They even give out uh, different grants and things for schooling, right? Yeah, that's, give out that is the, that's the reward. Yeah. They don't give out cash. It's it's scholarships. That's what you win. You you're Miss California. I think it's fantastic. Awesome. There's scholarships that you got to pay off your school. Well, that's great. That means we're empowering women that want to be smarter, right? Not women that are going. Right. But I could I could do this pool activity. I don't understand. That's a talent. Is that a talent? Can I? Get, is that is that in Miss America? No, that's that talent is not in Miss America. So that's not going to work. That's not going to help you. Um. So what do we do to start? Well, okay. So we're almost done for today, so we can leave that for next time. But so next Friday, then Michelle, is this something that you, that you're interested in doing? Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> hanging out with Pete. And now that I've met Candace, right? Come on, man. Madison <laughs> loves I mean, Candace. <laughs> Yes. I love Madison. I've got Madison is I'm surprised she wasn't in here the whole time because I've got her two favorite women on on the screen right now. <laughs> um, so then what we're going to work on for next week is we'll work on getting two other guests so that we can have four. And then I'll work on some topics and then I'll just basically drop a topic in the middle of you guys and you guys will just scramble, hit it. And when you're done with it, then I'll drop another topic and we'll start working it like that, because I think that could be interesting. Guys, if you're listening right now and you're like, man, I want to. I want to see what they're going to be doing next week. Send us in topics, send us in questions and we'll ask them or just ask them uh, live while we're here. So um, with that, I, I want to thank both of you guys for being here. Did you have fun? It's always fun. Okay. Oh, thank Happy you. Birthday. Woohoo. Yeah. Here we yeah, go. Can I just say, you guys want to hear the funniest thing? Oh, Uh oh. okay. Go ahead. <laughs> the funniest thing. I came into the office this afternoon and I opened the door, and somehow, you know the little poppers? They're like little wine yes. bottles. They tied like five of them together on the door, and I opened the door, and it went boom, everywhere. Scared the daylight Stuff, out of me. Right. <laughs> and there's like a walker over there, and I'm thinking, whose office is this? <laughs> They're a walker, so they got you a walker. a walker. Yeah, I, it's not happening. I know it's my 40th, but i'm not 40 i'm more like 28 i'm gonna keep it there that's the goal i love it man you guys have been awesome and i really do thank you guys for being here tonight exactly. um 
with that, I want to let you guys go have dinner, have fun. And this is how we roll. Guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. Let's go! <laughs> thank you, guys. We'll see you next Friday. Sounds good, Pete. Thanks for everything. Bye. Bye, Candace. Bye.